we had seen in the last videos that there are different types of storages available in Android. Uh, we have finished an internal and external storage with the first two points which is mentioned there, app specific storage which is basically internal storage. Only your app can access it, no other uh, app can be able to read it. And the second one is external storage where the app uh, shares the data with other apps which means uh, maybe media or documents and etc. We did that also. And then I skipped shared preferences, I directly went to databases in which we have seen SQLite so far. Please note that part where I said databases can either be on the phone or network or cloud. Uh, I've only done the phone part because it's only there in syllabus. So we have finished internal, external storage and databases and now we are into shared preferences. The reason that I am taking shared preferences now after uh, dealing with internal, external as well as databases is because I would like to show the difference between a primitive type of storing data to an advanced level of storing data. But shared preferences come somewhat in the middle. That's why I did not take it. Now we'll see what is shared preferences. Shared preferences is a way in which you can store and retrieve small amounts of data. Please notice on that word I said, small amounts of uh, primitive data such as key value pairs. Please note, uh, I'll be giving example where it will be useful, but remember that shared preferences, the word itself, tells you that it is some preference which you store in your app uh, which is shared across its activities. That's the idea but let's see technically what it is and it is stored uh, to a file on the device's internal storage. Please note the word I've used internal storage which means it is stored in the internal storage of your app uh, which also means no other app can access it or no normal user can access it. Uh, the data types which you can store are string, int, float, boolean, uh, whatever preferences you can store in an XML file, uh, I'll underline that once again, XML file uh, inside the app. Now, this is the part I would like you to uh, remember. When will you use? What is it suitable for? It is suitable when the user's settings needs to be saved or to store data that can be used in different activities within one app or within the app. So let me just take example as WhatsApp. Uh, I've taken the preferences screen or settings screen of WhatsApp, specifically chats screen in WhatsApp. If you notice, these are the settings of a particular WhatsApp account. Now, if you notice here that uh, the theme is mentioned as light or dark, you can choose that wallpaper. And uh, this is yes or no, whether enter key will send you a message and uh, media visibility. I just want you to see these settings in your uh, WhatsApp account, but if you see, uh, there is some, let's take this as a small example, font size. Now imagine there are three font sizes available there, uh, small, medium and large. Now what if I choose large and uh, when I click on OK, what happens? All my chats, wherever I find uh, font sizes would be changed to large or small. Now where will I store this data? The user has chosen, let's say large, they could not read the medium or small, they want large as a font size. Where will I store that the user has chosen? I am choosing the theme of the app as dark or light or the font size is small or large. These are some small settings. Where would you store them? This is the big question we have. Now, there are uh, four ways of storage. You already know that. One, internal storage. If I store it in internal storage in a uh, normal file, instead of storing it in shared preferences, if I used a normal file, what would be the problem? The problem is that uh, it is not organized. A file is not organized. You cannot use uh, methods on a file to just get data. You can pull all the records and then uh, write a lot of if conditions and then find out whether your data is available there or not, which is kind of a tedious process. The opposite would be to use databases. Now, if you use database to store uh, such a simple thing, for example, what is the font size preferred by the user? What would you do? You need to open uh, SQLite DB helper, open the SQLite database and then find a table and uh, call preferences and then pull the uh, preference which he has kept for font size and then apply it, which is a long process. But instead of that, uh, what if I had a simpler mechanism? So basically it comes in the middle. Now you see all these settings are just uh, some data type. If you choose the theme, it is a data type. Uh, enter is send, media visibility, these are all yes or no questions. Font size, it's a text. Uh, the language of your uh, app, 
the app's uh, language can be changed here and it will be applied everywhere in your uh, activity. Please note, this is an activity, this is another activity, this is another activity. So like this, you have n number of activities in uh, one app. So what if I would like a setting which will be applied to all the activities in my app? Where will I store it? I would prefer a shared preferences. The reason is uh, it is an XML file. Basically, it's a file. But since it is XML, it is organized also. And since it is XML, you don't require such lengthy codes like opening database and uh, accessing the data, etc, etc. You just need to put data, get data. And how will you store it? You will store it as name value pairs. Let's go to the technical part of shared preferences. Now, uh, the first thing you need to do is to create one shared preferences file per app. Please note it is one preferences file per app is recommended. Please don't create more than one. You can store a lot of name value pairs inside that one file. So uh, please name it in such a way that it is unique and easy to associate. That is up to you. And uh, when you want to get the values of shared preferences, the one which I have highlighted is the inbuilt method, get shared preferences. Normally it is context dot get shared preferences. If you're calling it in your main activity, no need to write anything, just shared preferences is fine. And uh, there are different modes in which you can get your shared preferences, uh, like private and public mode. Nobody prefers public, always use mode underscore private to be secure because this data I don't want to show to anybody else. This is the code. So you create an object of shared preferences and just use the word get shared preferences and you need to pass two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the file. Second parameter is in which mode would you like to open it. The second part is to add data to shared preferences. To save data in shared preference, you just need to call the edit function of a shared preferences editor class. So let me show the code. The first line will still, still remain the same. And the first line, please note, as I've already mentioned in files and all, this line of code would uh, create a file with this name in private mode and then return an, uh, a reference to that to preference. But imagine if the file already exists, it will not create a new one. It will just uh, create the reference and pass it to pref. So which means this line of code is uh, mandatory, it cannot be skipped. And the next line, what I've underlined is the one which is used to edit. When I say edit, it means adding data, removing data or clearing data, whatever it is. So I just need to call shared preferences dot editor, the class which belongs to shared preferences and create an object and then call the shared preference object and then say edit. After creating an object of the editor, all you need to do is just put uh, some values, the data types that you can put are boolean, string, int, float, long, etc. Now, if you see that all these things take two parameters. One is the name. The second one is the value. So, uh, first one, boolean, name of the key and value may be true or false. It's your wish. String, again, string value, int value, float value and it goes on like this. Uh, and the last line, don't forget this. Uh, you have opened a text file, you have written something and without pressing Control S, if you come out, the uh, data will not be stored. Something like that is the last two lines which I have written. Either you should say commit or you should say apply. Uh, the only difference is in the return type as well as the uh, small mechanism by which they work. But I would prefer use either one, uh, either commit or apply. Both would work the same way. Commit would return true or false. Uh, apply would return void. How do I get the data from the shared preference which I just put uh, into? So again, the first line would remain the same, get the shared preferences and then say get string, get in, get boolean, get float, something like this. In that one, again, two parameters need to be passed. The first parameter is the key what you have put. So it's a key value pair. So in the previous one, you said key and then you gave the value. In this one, you get using the key. But then the second parameter which you pass is the default value. In case the key does not return a value which you expected, what do you want me to keep there? And please note there is no commit or apply required here because you're not writing anything, you're just retrieving. How to clear or delete shared preferences? You just create the same thing uh, as we are done for adding data. Just call the editor and then say remove. Just pass the key which you had set to add records. And after everything you do, make sure that you either call commit or apply uh, without fail. The last one what is written there as to clear everything, which means whatever is there should be cleared. That can be just say editor dot clear. It will clear every record which you have added. Now, is there a limit of how many items I can add to a shared preference file? No, you don't have. You can have n number of uh, data being added to that one XML file.
with this the introduction part of shared preferences is over i don't want to create a new project just to explain what is shared preferences let's apply this in an already existing project what we had done for sqlite demo let's get to the program part now in order to demonstrate uh, shared preferences in the same project as SQLite, I'm going to take one of the setting because since I don't want uh, to apply a lot of options on one program, let me just do this program with one setting that is theme. So I'm going to give an option to the user saying that please choose a theme and once he chooses a theme to dark or light accordingly, I'm going to change the theme of my app. Not only uh, the first page, all other pages also. Let's try to do that. First thing I need to do here is to add a new menu so let me just add another menu item and this menu item is going to be holding uh, two more options inside it saying dark and light so let's start with that i am going to add one menu inside that menu item and because I, every item requires a parent element which is a menu so i'm going to put two more menu items inside that menu once you have finished that, let's do uh, the memeing. So first one is the item which we have kept. Let me just give the title. I'm not going to give an ID for it. I'm just going to apply the title as theme. This would be the name which comes. So if you see here, if you uh, have a theme, if you click on it, you'll get two more options. That's what we have given here. So let's only focus on these two options. The first one, I'll name it as IT Dark. And uh, give the title for that as Dark. No need for an icon. Let's just keep the word itself. And the next one is the second item. I'm going to name it as IT Light. And the title, I'm just going to keep it as Light. With this, our work here is done. Just click on this theme and you decide whether you want it like three dotted button or you want the theme to be uh, on the uh, action bar itself. So let's try to do that. I'll say show as action. Right now, if you leave it, it will become like this in the running also. Let me just make it always so that you can see how it looks like it would come on the design. So I uh, leave it up to you how you want this to happen. So if I click on this, uh, you will get two more options and then you can choose what you do want to do with those options. Since I don't have much uh, options here, I'll just leave it like this. Now let's go to the code part. In the last program, we had used this on create options menu to inflate the main menu to our uh, action bar. But then uh, we had taken care of that menu item which is called as a search here itself in on create options itself we have taken care of it but we have not uh, considered about any other options being added to that options menu uh, since i've already added two more i don't want to make sure that there are any other views attached to that the only thing i want is very simple you tap on dark uh, it dark i want the theme to be changed into dark the otherwise into light that's it so i need to make sure that when you click on these options what happens so how do i do that for that let me just close this options menu please note this line is important this line is the one which inflates this entire menu which we have created here into our design with that i'll just minimize this let me create one more method which will say on options item selected this is the method this method will be called every time a menu item has been clicked here i just need to make sure that the item which is clicked if it is dark what to do if it is light what to do so let's write the code for that in this one i'm going to write a switch case switch case item dot get item id and i'm going to put two switch cases one is r dot id dot it dark if it is the dark option which you have chosen what should i do the second one is case r dot id dot it light if it is a light option what am i supposed to do there is no default there are only two menus i'm very sure that either one of these two menus will be selected and that's why it calls this method and let me not touch the return let it be as it is only thing i need to write code here so now uh, since we have already done this program i'm going to continue with the, what we did in the contacts app uh, in the, the content provider uh, program so here all i'm going to do is i'm going to create a theme uh, as global variable and if you click on dark i'm going to set the theme as dark and then recreate my program that's all so let's do that quickly so first thing i'm going to do is create a static int the reason why i'm using int is themes have id and i'm not creating my own theme i'm using a system inbuilt theme so i'm just going to name it as theme id is equal to i'm going to refer to a light theme in the beginning and which means as soon as you open the program it will be light in uh, theme and then you can choose it to dark or light up according to your wish so let me just choose android dot r dot style the reason why i'm using android dot r is because i'm choosing an inbuilt theme to be applied as light and dark so i'm just going to call style dot 
please look for something called as theme overlay underscore material underscore uh, light or dark you can choose whichever you want so uh, since i want the light theme to be in the beginning so i'm choosing that this line of code would just create a theme id called android.r.style with theme overlay as material underscore light now if you click on dark what i wanted to do is change that theme id is equal to android dot r dot style dot theme overlay underscore material underscore dark if you clicked on dark theme please note if i just leave it like this with theme id it will not change anything in my activity because please note the first line of code which you see after uh, the on create super has been called is set content view since the view is already being rendered to your user this part whatever you write after this line will not make sense with respect to theme i need to write it before the set content view has been called so uh, what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to write the word recreate so that after applying or changing this theme id refresh in other words recreate your activity so that the theme would get applied let's do the light part also and then we'll come back here so what if he clicks on light option when he was in dark option so i'll just say theme id is equal to android dot r dot style dot theme overlay underscore material underscore light that's it and then call recreate once again that's it now if you see uh, if you click on dark i'll set the theme id to dark and then recreate vice versa light and recreate now either way it is not going to change anything in my program unless i set the theme to this particular theme id how do i do that and where do i do that is more important you cannot write anything with respect to theme after this set content view you have to write it before set content view so let me just call set theme to a particular theme id there are two options there either you can create your own theme or just pass uh, the id of a theme which you have created i already have a theme id let me just set that that's it please note the reason why i am taking theme as an example for shared preferences will be uh, you'll understand that shortly but then understand this is a preference the user can choose my data will not change at all the only thing is the way it is displayed to the user might be a little bit different based on the theme which you choose that's it so now let's run the program and check the output now as you see the program is running uh, there are two options menu added here one is the search the other one is the option called theme if i open that uh, menu item i'll get two more options which says dark or light so let me just choose uh, dark because it's already light theme let me just change it into dark and see what happens so the applications theme or the uh, this activities theme has changed to dark now if i re revert it back to light it is right now light now uh, before I proceed with uh, the shared preferences part, let's see what is the problem in this program. Uh, right now it's working, theme is fine. And what is the issue? Now imagine the user sets the theme as dark. As long as this main activity is available in the memory, it will be dark. But the moment if I recreate it, in other words, I close this, I clear uh, the app from memory and I open it once again. Please note the theme is not staying as dark, it is reverted back to light. The reason is that is not stored anywhere. The theme ID which you have chosen is not stored persistently somewhere. So how do I store it and where do I store it? That's the uh, options we have. First option is to store it in internal storage as a file. I can take the value of the theme what you have chosen as a text and store it in a file, a text file in my internal storage and then use the file uh, out output stream or input stream and then uh, use the writer and buffer reader and all those things to get the value. That's one way, which is a very primitive way and a little bit tedious also. The next advanced way is to use databases. Again, you'll need to use database adapter and then store all these themes in the database, which is kind of very high end for such a simple thing. So in between that, we have shared preferences. Now, uh, why do I need to use shared preference? Number one is that the theme does not stay when I uh, reopen my app after clearing it from memory. Not only that, if I apply the theme to dark and then I go to the next activity in the same app, I'm going to the next activity. The next activity does not take up the theme which you applied in the previous activity, which means here also I have to write uh, one more option here and then add it into dark, which means every activity which I open up, not only insert, even if it is edit, the theme does not affect any other activities because the code what I wrote only affects the uh, main activity. Now, how do I make sure that all the three activities in my project will receive the same uh, theme which I have chosen in uh, main activity? For that, we need shared preferences. Let's get to the program and apply shared preferences on our project and come back. As we have already discussed in the presentation, 
I need to create two people here. One is the shared preferences object. The second one is the editor object. So I'm going to create both here uh, globally shared preferences. Please note it should come from android.content. Let me just name it as preferences one. The second one is share preferences dot editor. Let me create another object editor. So you have preferences object and editor object. Now, where should I instantiate uh, the editor? And what data should I put inside the editor? Since I have only two uh, values to be stored, let me use Boolean. If it is true, it is dark. If it is false, it is light. Simple like that. So we can keep that as an idea. I don't want the static in theme ID. I'll be commenting it out shortly. But let's go inside the program. Since I need all details related to theme uh, before the set content view, I'll not write any code below this. I'll write all above it. So uh, before the set theme is put up, let me call the preferences. If you remember the method uh, which we had done in the PPT is get shared preferences. I need to pass two parameters. Number one, the name of the shared preferences file. Second one, in what mode do you want to open it? So I am just going to put within double quote some name. You can choose whatever name you want. Uh, if Since this is just for demo, I'm just going to put my preferences. But when you create it, make sure that the name makes sense with respect to what you're doing. And the last one is the mode which I need to pass. I'll just choose mode underscore. Please note almost everything else is uh, not recommended. Let me just choose mode underscore private. That's the perfect mode to use for a shared preference. The next line of code should be uh, to start editing. So you cannot start editing unless you instantiate the editor's object. So let me do that also next line. I'll just say editor is equal to preferences dot edit. Now the editor is also ready. Your shared preference is ready. All you need to do is call the editor, put some values and you can use the same editor uh, to remove or modify any value which is available in the file. So now let's go and add it. Where should I add this? I should add it at the place where you've clicked on this menu. I will just add one uh, item to the preferences what we have created. So let me call that editor object and then say put boolean. I'll use the boolean data type. First thing is the key. I'll just put the key as theme. Please note the key should not change from place to place. Whatever you put there should remain as it is. And I'm going to just say true. Please note editor dot put boolean key is theme and say true. True means dark mode is enabled and then recreate. That's it. The next one what I'm going to do here is opposite of that. I'll just call editor and then say put boolean same name. Please note case sensitive should be put and then say false. False just says it is not dark, it should be light, that's it. So after that, recreate, this part is done. So when you click on any of those two items in the menu, all I'm doing is I'm adding the theme value to the shared preferences editor and putting inside that. Please note, just putting Boolean doesn't make any difference because after that, you need to also make sure that it gets committed. So either you can write editor dot apply or you can continue or change that method to this and then say dot apply. This is also fine. In the PPT, I had shown it in two different lines, but I just changed it into one line. Editor, put Boolean, then apply it, which means save it. After you put the value, save that file. That's it. Now the editor has put the values uh, correspondingly based on what you have clicked on. Now all I need to do is check in the condition from the shared preferences, what is the value of theme? If it is true, uh, make it dark mode. If it is false, make it into light mode. That's all. Let's go and do that in the uh, beginning itself before the set theme code is called. I cannot set theme just like that. I need to make sure that it is an if else condition. So how do I do that? I'm going to write a simple if condition to check what value is there inside the shared preferences. Now, if there is no value by default, I want false to come so that light theme will be applied. So let me ch check with a simple if condition. I'll just say put if preferences dot get boolean. There we had set boolean. Here I need to get boolean. I need to pass two parameters. The key, as you know, is the word theme. This is the key. I'm going to use that here. The second thing I need to pass is uh, the default value. So I'm just going to pass the theme as the key. The second one, the default value is going to be false. Now, please understand this if condition. If preferences dot get Boolean theme, if it is, uh, please note this default value will only come if there is no data inside the keyword called theme. If there is no data, it will return false. If there is a data, it will return that data. Now, the first time you run this project, there is no such thing as theme. You need to put it only when the user clicks on uh, a particular option. So what happens here? Uh, it will return false by default because there's no value inside theme. It will return false. When I say false, the entire if condition here will return false. If it is false, it will go to the else part. Now, 
when it is false or it is an else part is the first time when you run what theme you want to get applied so i'll say the first theme i want is light theme so i'll just gonna call set theme please note i don't have the set theme here anymore i'm writing it here i'll call android.r.style.theme underscore material underscore light that's it now if at all this option the code which i've written here returns true what does it mean it means that you need dark theme so i'll just call set theme android.r.style dot material underscore dark please check the code you should understand this uh, i've called the preferences in the beginning of the program and uh, as soon as the program begins i've opened the object or uh, of preferences to edit and i'm checking if there is a word called theme in your preferences file since the first time when you run there is no such thing it'll return false and it'll come to the else part and the theme will be applied as light the first time you run the project ever if you choose light or dark, what would happen is, for example, if you choose dark, theme will be changed into true and then the program will recreate. When, I, when it recreates, here the preferences.get boolean would now say true. If it is true, it will apply dark. That's it. Now let's check the program. Now that the program is running, let me go to device file explorer and search for data folder. Inside that, one more data folder. Let me go and search of com.thomas.sql demo. I have it here. And inside that, if you see, till last program, we had only databases and cache and all those things. But in this program, there is one more folder being added here. If you notice that folder is shared underscore preferences. There are no files inside the shared preferences folder as of right now because there is no value being committed to that word uh, called team or my preferences. So let me do one thing. Let me just go back. And let's set the theme to dark. And the theme has changed as usual what we require. But let's see whether the shared preference has been added. Let me go back to the shared preferences folder. Let me synchronize it. And you see that there's a new file created called mypreferences.xml. Let me open that file. I'll just double click on it. It'll download it from the emulator and display it here in your uh, Android Studio. You can see that there is a small XML file created with the mapping of a Boolean type with the name as theme and value as true. Since I've set the value to true, dark mode should be applied. Now let me go and check whether it works uh, even if I destroy this activity. Let me just destroy this and remove it from memory. Let me open that project once again like how I did in the last uh, running. It is still dark. The reason is the value is persisted here on your shared preferences, which means any number of times now uh, until you remove the app from your phone, uh, it will still be in dark mode. Now, does it mean that it will automatically apply to my next activity? No, you will have to call that in the next activities. Let's do that now. In the next activities like insert or edit, I need not edit the actual theme. I just need to retrieve the theme which is av available uh, in your shared preferences and then apply it on my uh, system. So all I need is this small if condition and the preferences. I don't require the editor in the remaining activities. Let me do that. The only thing I need to do in insert and edit activity is to find the value of the my preferences uh, boolean which you have given in shared preferences and then just apply the theme accordingly. That's all. I'm not going to edit anything in other activities. In only main activity, I'm allowed to edit the theme what you want. Just like how you have in WhatsApp settings, you can't change it everywhere in your project. You have to go to settings, go to the chats and then choose uh, light or dark theme just like that. So I am going to create an object of shared preferences. Let me name it as preferences and the remaining code you can take it from main activity. If you see uh, this part, I'm just going to take this part and put it inside insert activity after super dot on create but before set content view. I don't want the editing part because I am not going to edit in any other activities. That's it. Let's do the same thing in edit activity also. I am in edit activity now. I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'll go after the super keyword but before the set content view, I'll just paste what I copied from there. I'll delete this editing part and let me get an object of preferences by creating shared preferences object called preferences. Done. Now the preferences are available throughout my app. Anywhere in my app, you can call this preference and get the value which is applied for theme. So let's try to run the project now. From my previous run, the dark theme is still applied here. So let me just keep it as dark and go to the next activity, which is insert activity. Now insert activity also has taken up that same theme. Let me go back. Let me choose a particular uh, record and go to edit activity. Edit activity is still there in uh, dark mode. Let me change it to light mode and check whether it works. Let me change it to light and uh, let me open the next activity 
next activity also follows the same theme what I chose in the main activity. It's working. Now let me go back to my device file explorer and find the same page. I'll synchronize it once again. I'll download it now because now it is light theme. You can see that boolean name is theme value has become false. So it keeps persisting data into this XML file in an organized fashion and you get the value everywhere in your project. With this our portions are complete. Thank you guys.